Good afternoon and welcome to this grand opening of the Gore Annex addition to Amundsen Hall, home to the Department of Chemical Engineering and Materials Science. I'm Steve Crouch, Dean of the College of Science and Engineering, and I have the honor of opening today's program. I want to begin my brief remarks by giving a special thank you to our lead benefactors, Bob and Jane Gore. We're honored that this new addition bears your name. I'd also like to thank the Dow Chemical Company and Valspar Corporation for their major contributions to the project. Altogether, gifts totaling $16 million helped make this much needed expansion of Amundsen Hall a reality. I think everybody knows that Amundsen Hall has a legacy of success. The building's namesake, Neil Amundsen, built a top-ranked chemical engineering program and helped lay the foundation for today's highly regarded companion program in materials science and engineering. More recent department heads, including Ted Davis and Frank Bates, uh, picked up where Neil left off and positioned the department for continued success in the years ahead. Now, new department head, Dan Frisbee, will continue that legacy, and he has the benefit of a spectacular new facility to work with. Chemical engineering is one of the most popular undergraduate majors in the College of Science and Engineering, and student demand for materials science and engineering is growing fast. This building expansion will allow us to better meet that strong student demand. Once a few additional faculty are in place, the department will have the capacity to, roll, to enroll up to 200 new undergraduate students a year, up from about 140 just a few years ago. The Gore Annex will also improve the quality of education for our students by providing new learning and laboratory spaces. New state-of-the-art facilities will encourage more interdisciplinary research making us more competitive for research grants and create more opportunities for our students. In short, this building will take an already great department and keep it among the best in the country for years to come. What an exciting prospect. It's now my honor to introduce our next speaker, Eric Kaler, president of the University of Minnesota, and himself a proud graduate of our chemical engineering PhD program. Eric. Thank you, uh, Steve. I appreciate the introduction. I'd like to begin by acknowledging uh, the presence of one of my bosses uh, with, uh, with us here today, uh, Patricia Simmons from the Board of Regents. Welcome. Uh, I do want to echo uh, Dean Crouch's thank you to everyone who played such an important part in this wonderful uh, building, and of course, special thanks to Bob and Jane Gore, uh, without whom, whose help uh, this simply would not have gotten done. Thank you both so much. Uh, and to our partners at Dow and Valspar, thank you so much for engaging with us and uh, helping to move this uh, critically important project uh, forward. Uh, We'll do great things uh, with this building. Uh, there's no pressure whatsoever on the new head, uh, Dan Grisby. <laughs> um, and I'm sure he will uh, more than exceed uh, what we expect him to do. Uh, I've been to uh, a few ribbon cutting ceremonies uh, in my time. This one is uh, especially special uh, to me. As Steve mentioned, I graduated uh, from this department in 1982. Uh, I was much smaller then. So it's a good thing that the building is getting bigger too. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the, the expectations uh, and, and uh, opportunities are enormous. Uh, this project is a uh, really great example how uh, private funding, uh, state support, uh, and an industry partnership can come together uh, to make something big uh, happen. Uh, our College of Science and Engineering contributed funds for this project, and thanks to our friends in the Minnesota State Legislature, we were able to also use higher education asset preservation and restoration funds we call those HEPR funds for short, uh, as part uh, of the upgrade of the facility. Uh, it's an ideal partnership. Uh, it connects to many things that we're doing across the university, uh, including our very successful MinDrive initiative to line up the resources uh, of the university to tackle some of the critical problems facing uh, the state of Minnesota. Uh, and this department has been very involved uh, in elements of that uh, initiative. Uh, we've identified four uh, key areas that are important, uh, food and food safety, uh, water and its management, uh, robotics and advanced manufacturing, uh, and neuromodulation in the medical field. And that's a, a, a 
program that's moved forward uh, very, very successfully, and uh, chemical engineers and material scientists will play roles uh, in those areas. You know, in the end, our mission is really uh, very simple. We are in the business of preparing uh, the next generation of scientists uh, and engineers uh, and aiming them towards important problems uh, that the society needs to have solved in order for it to have the kind of future uh, that we want it to have. Uh, we really are in the business of, uh, of creating tomorrow uh, and do that with the belief that tomorrow will be a better day uh, than today. And to be able to do it in a facility like this one uh, is remarkable. We're very grateful for the support that made it happen and excited uh, about the future. Now my pleasure to introduce the person who's in charge uh, of the future of this uh, great department, uh, my colleague Professor Dan Frisbee, Head of Chemical Engineering and Material Science. Thank you, Eric. I'd first like to echo the thank yous to our tremendous uh, supporters that made this project possible. To Bob and Jane Gore, we're very proud, couldn't be prouder to count you among our uh, friends and, and supporters of this department. Thank you so much. And to our distinguished guests from the Valspar Corporation and the Dow Chemical Company, and to all of you alums and alumni and, and, uh, and supporters of this department. Thank you for your generous support. Um, we couldn't be prouder today to be uh, here. Uh, and I'm confident about the future of the department. I'm excited about our future. The Gore Annex is a, is, a, is a wonderful new opportunity for us. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the vital role that our colleague and former department head, Frank Bates, played in making today possible. His vision, his leadership, and his unflinching commitment to the department and the people within it have given us much to be proud, proud of, and we're very grateful to him. Let's all give Frank <laughs> I'm very proud to take on the department head position at such a critical time in our department's history. We have before us a tremendous opportunity for growth both to expand our student body and our faculty and to capitalize on the synergy between chemical engineering and material science as we tackle problems related to energy, the environment, healthcare, and information technology. The Gore Annex is key to our future. It allows us to maintain and to grow our reputation as one of the very best chemical and materials engineering programs in the nation, and it provides us with much needed resources to train the next generation of chemical and materials engineering students. As I think about future growth, I'm reminded of something our former colleague and department head and then dean, H. Ted Davis, said to me when I arrived here 20 years ago as an assistant professor. Ted said to me, teaching and research are cut from the same cloth. We teach by doing research with our students and postdoctoral fellows, and our research is improved by dedication to reinforcing in ourselves and in our students the fundamentals of our disciplines. His point was that teaching and research have a symbiotic relationship. And he firmly believed it is possible and desirable to be both an outstanding educator and an outstanding researcher. And I think parenthetically, he was telling me that he expected both <laughs> from me. Um, I think that combination, excellence in teaching and excellence in research, is our department's legacy, and I also firmly believe it's our future. There is no question that the Gore Annex Building Edition will strengthen our department's mission to educate and to conduct research that will change the way we all live. Now, I'd like to invite you to look at a video that we prepared that demonstrates how the Gore Annex is an example of what is possible when we partner with individuals, industry, and the community. 